Hey everyone, I am Alfonso and welcome to this workshop on the essentials of urban sketching. Um, I'm really excited about this workshop and glad you guys decided to join in. Um, you won't only be learning about the essentials necessarily, but I'll be sharing with you some invaluable tips that have helped me tremendously in my process and hopefully will help you too. Okay, so this workshop is divided into four parts. In part one, we'll be looking at some of the basic materials, just some basic supplies that I believe that you need. And I'll uh, we'll be going over some drawing fundamentals, as well as taking a look at some of the basic aspects of watercolor. And in part two, we'll be looking at how to break down and simplify a scene. So at least you can uh, kind of get an understanding of what you're looking at. And in part three, uh, here we'll actually discuss some design concepts like uh, emphasis, contrast and so on and in final we will actually close out with a demo drawing which i'll walk you through my process step by step so you can have an idea of how i actually start from beginning to end so let's get started now when it comes to urban sketching uh, you have a wide variety of materials and supplies to choose from now depending on your style of course your comfort uh, your budget, of course, and just your basic preference. And while I feel uh, you should definitely explore as many as you can, I don't necessarily believe that you should burden yourself with a cumbersome baggage of stuff. You know, just try to keep it really simple, light, and practical. Urban sketching is a truly fun uh, and really liberating experience. And I believe the simpler you keep uh, your supplies, you know, especially if you're moving around, you know, because you want to keep that experience spontaneous and immediate. And that's a part of the fun and the joys of, you know, going around and sketching. You want to be able to just grab your stuff and get going. So what I'll do is I'm going to share 10 basic types of supplies that I believe is invaluable for your arsenal. And this is assuming that you also want to do some watercolor eventually. But if you don't, you know, that means this list will even be shorter for you. So here they are. Paper is important. Um, this is the thing that's preserving your work. You wouldn't want to spend a lot of money and time and creative effort in creating something really beautiful that you cherish so much and then it deteriorates in no time. You know, so it's really important that you, you really get the best quality paper that you can afford. So what are some properties to look for? One, ensure your paper is acid free. Acid free paper is more capable to withstand uh, the deteriorating effects of light. So your art can really last a long time. For ink drawing, smooth bristle paper like the Strathmore 500 series is best. There's no bleeding, uh, nibs, you, you know, your pen nibs will really glide effortlessly smooth and tiny details are no issue. And plus, it can withstand layers of inking and the most abrasive erasing. Now, bristle paper can handle wet media, but watercolor is best applied to watercolor paper. All right. So generally, at least a 140 pound weight like this Strathmore 500 series cold press sheet would be excellent for that. Um, whether you sketch on a single sheet, a drawing pad, sketchbook or journal, try to use the best quality paper you can afford. Pencils are an indispensable supply, right? Uh, you want a lead that is not too hard and uh, not too soft, all right? Deep, soft leads like a 2B grade and higher often smudge easily and can be a bit troublesome to erase. And then on the other hand, hard uh, points like a 2H uh, and anything higher than that, maybe too light and can sometimes dig into the, the paper or whatever drawing surface that you're using. All right, so I usually recommend like a H or a HB or a B grade pencil those are generally best watercolor pencils are also nice uh, the good thing is you won't have to worry about your marks showing should you uh, later on apply watercolor because they will just dissolve away with whatever what media you apply now there are tons of pens to choose from all right technical drawing pens fountain pens dip pens brush pens ballpoint pens rollerball pens you know try uh, to get pens however with permanent ink all right, especially water resistant ink and have at least two point sizes, one fine, one medium or bold. And that's it. Uh, there's no need to really go overboard with getting all these expensive pens. Just try to get at least uh, permanent ink, water resistant and uh, try to get at least two point sizes, a fine point and a bold point, And that's pretty much it. For erasing, you don't need more than a simple plastic or needed eraser. 
once it's gentle on the drawing surface and erases without leaving those uh, stainy smudges or smears, <laughs> that's fine. A ruler is super useful uh, for lines, angles, measurements, edges, you know, but this doesn't mean you won't be drawing your lines by hand. Of course you will. But sometimes a ruler is useful uh, to just place small dots that can serve as a guide for your sketching. If you're drawing trees, buildings, light poles, you know, horizons, and so on. A simple six inch rule is all you need. Some kind of a, a fastener is useful for holding down those stubborn sheets sometimes. So you can use something like a, a rubber band, uh, paper clips, or just a small piece of artist tape with a, a mild adhesive. So that's pretty much all you need. For urban sketching, you really don't need a large collection of colors. Um, actually, a basic palette is best, so you're not overwhelmed with choices, all right? Um, and plus, it pushes you to practice and get better at your mixing. Um, when selecting colors, try to get single pigment paints, all right? And uh, even a, a nice travel set like this one by uh, Dale Arani is pretty useful. It has a nice range of colors. There are a variety of brushes to choose from, um, but try to have at least two sizes one for fine details, one for bolder brushwork, uh, round, flat, natural, synthetic, that's down to your personal preference. But try to use brushes that hold water really well and can keep a sharp point, all right? So for undergo painting, uh, a pocket size brush is also awesome. Uh, water brushes for the inbuilt water reservoir are also useful, but be careful with them because uh, they really take some getting used to. So the simpler, the better. So if you'll be painting on the go, a small, tight, and durable water bottle is always useful. Um, I usually keep two of them. An absorbent like a piece of uh, paper towel, an old sock, uh, a washcloth is always useful for dabbing your brush to remove excess water. And plus, a little scrap of paper, you know, for testing your marks and uh, uh, your color mixes is also really useful. And perhaps the only other thing you really need is a container to put all your supplies in and uh, maybe a folded chair to sit or something like that. But other than that, you really don't need that many supplies to get you started. Now, a commonly overlooked but uh, really important aspect of drawing that can definitely affect your urban sketching, actually your drawing practice in general, uh, has to do with how you control your drawing instrument. All right. Now, remember, you'll be drawing buildings, uh, trees, roads, people, and all kinds of things. You know, So making small adjustments in the way you move your arm or hold your instrument can affect the quality of your marks significantly. Um, a general recommendation is to be aware of uh, one, the movement that occurs along the entire arm, right, from your fingers to your shoulders, all right? And also to be aware of how tightly you grip the drawing instrument. And three, how hard you press down. So those three factors are very important. The movement from your fingers to your shoulder, uh, uh, how tight, tightly you grip the, uh, the drawing instrument you're using, whether it's a pen or pencil, and how hard you press down on the drawing surface. Those three things are really important. Generally, uh, in making long strokes, like when you're drawing buildings, uh, roads, you know, the horizon or perspective lines, you try to move your entire arm as one unit. So you essentially kind of lock your elbows and let most of the movement revolve around your shoulders. So you're moving your entire arm as one. And uh, what this does is, is it enables you to make really long, continuous strokes in a very smooth and natural way. Also, relax your grip a bit and kind of rehearse the movement before making a mark so it will be really smooth and steady. Another basic aspect of drawing that is especially important to urban sketching is drawing lines, and especially vertical and horizontal lines. Now, these two lines are important to holding together uh, the structure of an image because you're drawing buildings and trees and roads and perspective lines and so on. So if these lines are not uh, sound, <laughs> if they're not well drawn, your drawing can become unstable and things can appear uh, imbalanced or like it's toppling over. So when drawing uh, vertical and horizontal lines, you don't necessarily have to use a ruler or a straight edge. In fact, I, I generally recommend that you practice drawing them 
freehand. But a simple technique that you can use is to just draw uh, small dots, like at the beginning of a line, at the end of the line, and at the midpoint. And then all you're doing is pretty much rehearsing your movement and then connecting the dots. This just helps to give you a bit more control and also um, don't try to make it perfectly straight either. If your lines wobble a bit, that's fine. Wobbly lines actually uh, generally have a bit more character and convey a sense of uh, a, a, a sense of life and movement, you know, much more than just perfectly straight lines. You know, they don't look as mechanical or geometric. You know, they look more full of life. Uh, more spontaneous and more expressive. Now a common issue in drawing with ink is whether to draw with ink only or with a pencil on the drawing. Now uh, there are pros and cons to both and I guess it depends on your style, uh, the subject uh, or the circumstance. So let's take a look at both. Now generally I recommend doing at least a simple pencil sketch before you do an ink drawing. Um, it doesn't have to be fully rendered. Uh, but, but just enough to kind of lay out the composition of the drawing before actually applying your ink work. The thing that I really like about having a, a pencil on the drawing is being able to try things and kind of experiment with your composition. All right. So what if you use this or that frame? You know, what if I include this or that detail? Um, what if I focus here instead of there? What if I make this tall or make that shorter? You know, a pencil on the drawing or a sketch uh, affords you, you know, to measure multiple times before you make the cut, so to speak. And why not allow yourself the opportunity to do that? You generally end up being more pleased with the composition anyway. And as I have said, the underdrawing doesn't have to be and shouldn't really be a finished drawing. Just a basic sketch, you know, that serves the purpose of giving you a guide to follow for your ink work or whatever, you know, watercolor or whatever you choose to use afterwards. Now, don't forget that with pencil, you're not just limited to doing an underdrawing, you know. Um, there are other types of information that you can add as well because you can easily erase it afterwards. So in addition to just doing an underdrawing, I sometimes uh, jot down a few notes, uh, reminders. I may even put a quick diagram. I may even put a value scale, things like that, you know, that serve as a reference that I know I can easily, you know, erase later on. And lastly, sketching things out with a pencil also forces you to take the time to make observations and think about your drawing before just jumping in. And this is very important because it allows you to explore ideas and questions and really interact with the scene before committing to it. You know, and this is something that sometimes we can get carried away and forget to do. Now, just jumping into an ink drawing with no pencil sketch around the drawing can be a bit intimidating. And, and of course, rightfully so. You know, you can't erase and each mark you make is permanent. But there is a sweet paradox here. And it's that uh, you are now free from that worry. All right. So there is something just so liberating and empowering in just freely creating a drawing in ink and not having to worry about erasing lines or correcting mistakes. Now, of course, it may not uh, necessarily be as easy as it sounds, you know, so I'm going to share some tips with you that I believe are pretty useful when it comes to just drawing straight in ink with no prior pencil sketch around the drawing that will hopefully ease your mind a bit. Now, since you won't be able to erase your lines, I advise you take some time to really look at your scene before you start drawing. So that way, when you actually start drawing, your lines will be more confident and uh, your drawing will be more purposeful. And you really have a sense of what you're doing. So what are some of the things to look for? Well, first you look for landmarks. Things in a scene that you think are structurally important for your drawing. Things that you believe will help you to construct the drawing more easily. Of course, these will vary from scene to scene, but there's some basic things to keep in mind, like uh, large and dominant shapes, uh, strong vertical, horizontal and diagonal lines, like the lines of perspective, uh, the edges of buildings. These are some of the basic things to look for that will help you to kind of like navigate your way through the drawing, even though you're using ink. Another tip is to try to gauge certain measurements before you actually start drawing. 
you know, just to get a sense of proportion. So make some comparative measurements. You know, how tall is uh, that building compared to this one? How wide is the house compared to how tall it is? Uh, is that window about half the size of the door or is the door about a third the height of the house and so on? You know, these are the types of comparison and measurements to get a sense of before you actually start drawing because then you, you have this subconscious sense of proportions that will be guiding your drawing. Now, when drawing with ink, if you're not careful, you can find out that a line is not straight when you're actually at the end of the line. I've made that mistake many times. And to avoid this, um, I use a system of dots. So I'll measure or guesstimate a distance or a position, make a mark, and then draw my line or shape or whatever it is. It's a very simple technique. Uh, and it will save you from making lots of mistakes, you know, leaves no mess, and allows you to draw with ink with confidence. So you're essentially guesstimating the distance of a position. Uh, you make a dot, and then you simply connect them. So let's talk about watercolor. It is such a beautiful and amazing medium. And although there is so much we could talk about, let's just go over some of the essentials. Now, just in case uh, you want to apply your uh, uh, watercolor to your urban sketches, you realize that there really isn't much you need to get started. Now, before we even talk about paints, let's talk about paper. Um, paper is very important. The type of paper you use can significantly affect the quality of your work. And as I discussed before, it is important to use paper with the right weight, at least like a 140 pound, like this uh, 140 pound uh, cold press sheet here that I have from the Strathmore 500 series. Paper that is too low in weight may buckle when you apply wet media to it. So try your best to work with adequate weight watercolor paper. At least uh, try multimedia paper if you're not able to get your hands on some good quality watercolor paper. It is best to use a compact selection of colors that at least includes a warm and cool version of your reds, yellows, and blues. Because this will enable you to have the essential primary colors uh, that will enable you to mix a wide range of colors and hues, values, and saturations. A couple uh, a convenient green or two is useful. Uh, earth colors, of course, because they allow you to uh, create subdued and uh, muted mixes and grays. And uh, of course, are you know obviously super convenient for landscape painting in general. Now I'm going to share a few useful tips to keep in mind, especially for beginners. Now, though you may see many artists seem to just spontaneously and effortlessly just apply their watercolors, they're able to do this through years of practice. It helps to really plan your approach a bit, especially if you're just learning. Eventually, certain steps will become second nature to you, uh, or not even necessary after a while. But it helps when starting out to take certain preparatory steps before you just jump into applying your paint to paper. So the first one is to always keep a small piece of scrap paper, which you can use to test your colors or your mixes to ensure you're pleased with it before you actually apply them to your art. Sometimes it will take you uh, a few tries before you really get the right color or the right saturation or the right value or just the right amount of water in your brush. Another thing is to take the time to really look at the scene and try to identify and simplify the colors and the saturations and the values that you see because it is never necessary to try to recreate every color that you see in front of you. Oftentimes you'll find that one or two colors in your palette uh, can be used in several different ways and could mix to substitute for several of the colors that you actually see in a scene. Right? So try to not be overwhelmed by all the variations of colors that you may see in a scene and understand that you can actually simplify it to just a few groups of color categories or color families. And the last tip is to make a general plan of how you will use the colors that you have to match or account for the colors that you see. So think about uh, the colors, uh, the values, the saturations you see, and then 
take a look at your palette and see how you can create that that match so think of what mixes you may have to use think of what uh, uh combinations or what layers you may have to apply from your palette think of the ways that you may have to use these two colors to account for that one sometimes you have to uh simplify or even remove a color that you see or or just completely ignore it and account for the ones that you have to recreate that scene and this also fosters a sense of um, spontaneity and uh, enable you to feel free to use your mixes and uh, your color uh, combinations and recreate your version of what you're observing.